just took it down a bit. I'm still stubbly. You look totally different. I almost didn't recognize you. Patrick, oh, you have the handsome background I've seen yet. <laughs> oh, you like my background? Funny. Really good. <laughs> that's funny. Oh my God. It was meant for the LDI happy hour, but this will work just fine. <laughs> Why is it so e echoey where you are, Waylon? Um, let's see here. It just oh, sounds like you're in a massive room or something. I am in a massive room. It's full of tile. Uh, Marcel, where are you? What's your background? You I'm sitting around. outside. Oh. Just sitting outside because I'm smoking a cigar, so I didn't want to sit inside and smoke a cigar. Very nice. I've been sequestered to my hotel room. Why? Because apparently I come from a hot state and legal got involved on the sound stage and said, whoa, 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 wait, <laughs> you can't be here. Technically you have to quarantine for 14 days. You're kidding. Yeah. So I'm, I've got like multiple zooms open on multiple devices and unity running comms on an iPad. And <laughs> You're shit. in Chicago still? Yeah. Yeah. So, but I'm doing it all remotely now. Wow. And thankfully, Justin, who's, who's my uh, lighting director, uh, is on set, and he came in through Florida because he did Latin billboards. And uh, ironically enough, Chicago does not consider Florida a hot state. What? Yeah. Well, we're not. It's pretty interesting. And Chicago's shutting down all their restaurants on Saturday. Oh, God. No. Oh. Yeah, someone shared with me today, and I won't mention whose name it was, but someone shared to me just like an hour ago the, the new California rules for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Isn't that special? Oh, yeah. Did anyone see that? It's fantastic. Yep. It's absolutely Hang fantastic. On, they I'm, got I'm so loud. I'm going to share it with you because it's unbelievable. It's insane. Jesus. Yeah. If I could stop hitting this admit button for two seconds, I will share it with you. Well, apparently I'm not going to stop hitting the admit button. Um, where is this thing? Here it is. Download. Nice background, Mark. So. Ah. The backyard. I almost went and sat outside today as well. Beautiful. Well, I'm smoking a cigar, so it's kind of frowned upon inside the house, I guess, you know. Isn't it so, your house? It was snowing here in Chicago yesterday. Was it really? <laughs> last actually last two days it snowed. It's gonna be ninety one degrees here tomorrow. Oh boy. Guys, can you believe this is happy hour thirty? <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. 14 days to flatten that curve, my man. Da, da, da. Just add <laughs> 15 more. <laughs> yeah, I can I can honestly uh, say I was wrong. I got no problem with saying that. You Why and I... you and a lot of other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Remember I when we were talking only... about day ninety one? <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. I was I was uh, I was fairly off on that one. Yeah, there's that California thing for anybody who wants to see it. The rules for California, if you're, uh, if you intend to celebrate Thanksgiving or Christmas. It says a potential security issue detected. It always mm. says that. Well, that's because it came from me. There's always <laughs> a potential security issue if it came from me. I'm a dodgy. Dodgy Fuka. So, um, hey everybody. Hey, Marsha. Um, everybody have a good Herrick, week. Herrick's here. Hey. Shh, shh. Everyone, be quiet. Herrick's here. He messaged me. He was bored today. <laughs> oh, really? So he decided to show up and harass me. Torture yeah, me. Yeah, sure. It's better than just texting you. This way, everybody can hear it. Yeah. Oh, wait. Dearson's <laughs> here. Yes, he is. I have pictures for him. Uh-oh. I can Dearson only imagine. Hey, what the fuck? 
Hi, guys. Hey, Hey, Liv, where are you at the polls? What? (laughs) Why aren't you at the polls? Because um, it's kind of a weird story. They called me in the office and they said, are you connected um, to Marcel? What's your affiliation with the League of Women Voters? And I was like, well, I support them, but I'm not on their board. In fact, I haven't even paid dues in two years. I haven't gone to any meetings, et cetera. And they were like, well, the client meeting the Board of Elections is not comfortable for you being associated with them. And we need someone more vanilla. Wow. Yeah. Yep. And vanilla is something I've never been. But I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm vanilla. (laughs) <laughs> isn't it like League of Women Voters? Isn't that like a non-partisan? Non-partisan, exactly. Suffrage, man. Suffrage. So um, I happen to be friends with the um, state president, who is a very good person for pop culture and music. That's how we bonded. And um, she's looking into it. And then I have a, a lawyer looking into it. Just, just because um, I don't think that's right. But you know what? Maybe they did me a, a blessing in disguise because it was quite arduous work in a room with no windows and half the staff would go in and out of there with no masks. So I was getting kind of paranoid, to be honest with you. Oh, it might be for the best then, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just they, they just, that group had worked together for a year and they just didn't care about masks. So I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. But I didn't say anything. I didn't complain about it. So, um, you know, maybe, you know, I'll miss the money, but I have to just keep moving on. Look for something else. Work with you guys. Ridiculous. Try to get somebody elected. Yeah. It's absurd. Well, sadly, someone is going to get elected, you know. What? Sadly, I sadly someone is going to get elected. I mean, I wish you could. Sometimes at these elections, I wish you could just kind of do a reshuffle and say, you know, nah. You didn't write I'll, in Kanye. I'll pick box number. Well, you know, I was I oh. was really getting close to Kanye until I saw him on Joe Rogan, and you know, we just didn't align on a few things. Like, you know, <laughs> he's insane. I'm not. You know. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't realize how nuts he was until I, uh, until I heard him on, on Joe Rogan. I was like, wow, dude. You I mean, I knew, he, why. Like, I knew he was a bit out there, but. When you get him that day where he's not on his meds, man, holy shit. Yeah, you worked for him, didn't you? Oh yeah. More times yeah. than I could have admit. Did, I was you there. Old, did you do that Glastonbury thing with the pars? No. Is that you, Pearson? No, I, I, I did all these sort of special one-off things with him and there was a bunch of stuff he wanted, wanted us to design. In fact, it was when we were, um, when I was with uh, Spike Brandt and Justin Colley at ArtFag and we got this call from his uh, production manager at the time, uh, Nancy Ghosh, and she was relatively new and we had turned him down I think four times or five times on things. And um, she called up and, and said, listen, you know, Kanye is getting a little upset about this, wants to really know why you guys won't do this. Is this a racial thing? And we laughed because <laughs> I was doing, I was doing this stuff with Justin Colley too. And it, I'm like, well, I, the, the guy with the English accent that you've been hearing, he's actually black. Let's, let's start there. This really isn't a racial thing. This is a we don't want to be the next guy's fired thing. And it's not when Kanye is displeased. It's, it's not if Kanye is displeased. It's when he's displeased. And we're just um, going to be the next people fired. So we have no desire to get involved in that process. We're blessed with a lot of work. And we just have a lot of clients that don't that won't put us through that hell, and they're like, "But you've oh, had a great oh, oh, poor, poor grumpy rich rock star or pop star, yeah. you know." I'm sad for you. And they said, Your "You've life had a great relationship so with him." I said, "Yeah, because I've always met a Kanye, but then one of these days you meet B Kanye, and you're the great Satan, like it, it, one know, who rushes the stage at awards shows." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So that was always Bob really Harmon. Bob Harmon, please explain your background. You're, you never saw this episode of The Twilight Zone with William Shatner? Yeah. And the, oh, uh, the creature that's on what the that is? Yeah. I remember that now. It's Holy Halloween. Shit, that's going it's back. Hall yeah. That's crazy. That's one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> I thought so it was Herrick, you, today. You, you were showing the background. Was that, was that, a, a, that was just a lucky you, night? Yeah, that was you uh, examining a Bloody Mary like six years ago. <laughs> yeah, those Bloody Marys were amazing. I think that was the night I, I, I think I, I literally hung my watch off this. I have that, that photo. Thing. I'm trying to find it. But it was amazing. Uh, that watch weighed a ton, and it <laughs> the Bloody Mary held it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get on the uh, on the the later Zoom, uh, the later LDI Zoom. I was out at dinner with a bunch of people. Uh, yeah, I I'm a... sorry I didn't stay on it. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen Steve Warren at 4 a.m. That was oh something. Oh my God, <laughs> Steve Warren. God. Mad. He was well, drunk on the first call at one o'clock in the afternoon. So. That's why he's not on here today. He's still hung over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just he sent an right email. He more, sent so. an email. He sent an email saying he slept the entire next day. All bad. He was so worn out. But I guess yeah, he, he figured was, he would have been up at four a.m. Vegas time anyway. So what was the difference? He was hilarious, man. He was. Funny. Marcel, were and, we uh, the only ones that did the practical jokes? I don't know, but you know, it was, it, it seemed funny, but they were so out of it. Like Gord Addison sitting there going, why is everyone so quiet? Right? Like, and, Here, Patrick, and, I got this for you. Gordon was truly you? gone. He didn't oh, make it through. Oh, Steve Warren was a trooper though. I mean, the yeah. one where the one where we went out of the screen and somebody came on and went, what the that hell is going funny. on here? Everybody took a piss break <laughs> they at thought the same it was, time. They thought it was a yeah, pee break for the whole yeah. Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, did that, that to Warren. Hilarious. Did we have to make I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We got, we got him a couple well. times. Remember the one time we got him with on the audio and he's calling his IT guy and stuff because he's <laughs> like, what the hell's going on here? He gets his IT guy to come over and work on his computer and we started laughing. <laughs> Yeah. It was lots of fun uh, getting together, really. Yeah. It really was. It really was. It was, uh, I'll tell you, for anyone who was on the UK one, it, it was a little stuffy, like it was a little serious. We talked about restart and we talked about people being out of work and all the stuff you really didn't want to do at the, you know, at the circle bar happy hour, right? You kind of wanted to be happy for once. And, uh, but it was cool. It was really nice. It was just less fun, I think, than the other two. And the the West Coast one, everybody was just yelling all the time. And I, <laughs> honestly, I had too much to drink by that time. And I was like, God, I can't even understand. Like Holly O'Hare just decided she was going to talk louder than everyone oh, yeah. and talk constantly. And, she and was like every nostalgic and getting sad and crying. But, but every single oh, no. person that came in, she'd be like, Oh, Ellen, how are you? I haven't <laughs> seen you. How are the kids? How's you know, how's this? Well, oh, that's when... because she's not in the industry really anymore. So it was like a big homecoming for her. She wanted to catch up with every she's single person. Like that a came bed in. And she's running like a bed and breakfast. She's like running a bed and breakfast in the country somewhere. And, and teaching piano, piano lessons. Yeah. Yeah. But she's as crazy as ever. I mean, she, I, it was like I saw her yesterday when I saw her on that call, you know? I was like, oh, I remember this. Yeah. It I was, was gone fun, by that. You, you just slipped right out the back door, though, Marcel, on that West Coast one. It was like one minute you were there, the next minute you were gone. No, very, very, I'm going to. Well, I told, I told time. Eric Loader. I, I just, because you know how, like, when you try to leave, it was exactly like trying to leave the circle bar. You know, yeah, I got to go to the right. bathroom and then you just go straight out the front door, right? Because otherwise it's going to be like, ah, oh, one more, one more. <laughs> hey, you just got to pour an Irish goodbye. I've yeah. never been a really yeah, tough one to convince. Thinking, you know. It's really the only way. I've never to stay a little longer. So. Well, it was yeah. fun. So anyways, I, I, had to, I had to hand it off to Loader because it was, uh, it was on my Zoom account. So. I just said, hey, Eric, I'm about to Houdini. So here you go. You're in control now. Bye. Click. Well, you know, Warren, bless him, he stayed until the bitter end. He made it all No away. way. He did. 
Oh my yeah, God, he must were, have been completely yeah. incoherent by the end. Yeah, he was on another hour if we did too. <laughs> you weren't done that late. Yeah. If you were done by like 11 p.m. East Coast time. We were Who drinking was? all yeah, day, we, Eric. Yeah, but isn't that like four yeah. in the morning in the UK? Yeah, five. Yeah, he four. was in the UK. Yeah, four. Yeah, they're five hours ahead. Yeah. But I remember one year at LA, Steve Warren got up on the, he was like dancing on the top of his consoles in his booth. Oh my God. One year? <laughs> one year? I mean, I think I've seen him do that Every five year? times. Oh. <laughs> Well, they used to have like a party, you know, like sometimes at LDI, they had a party right at the end of the day, right in their booth. And right. a little while. Sasquatch, just, Sasquatch yeah. just zoomed in. Yeah. It really doesn't take much to get them partying. I don't know why, Chris, but I feel like growling. <clears throat> Are you growly? You're just like nature, Chris, with the big beard and lots of hair and you just kind of <laughs> Make me feel like wilderness. I don't know. You look like Sasquatch. <laughs> you look like Bigfoot. Right, exactly. Sasquatch Chris. Yeah. That's great. I wake up to jump on the call and... Uh... Wake up? <laughs> wake up. <laughs> no, like, hey, no. buddy. Apparently we have disturbed the great beast's slumber. <laughs> <laughs> Sushi-eating Sasquatch of northern Pennsylvania. Oh, God. Sushi, uh, right? Sushi, yeah. Where are you, Chris? Uh, this is my backyard. Which, which is where? Uh, this is uh, Long Valley, New Jersey. Wow, nice. So we got three acres on the side of a mountain. Back you? up on the seventy-two acres of uh, townland. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. When we all have to evacuate civilization, we'll be out there. Hey, no, I got. I actually heard about uh, uh, Cosmo's weapons cache today, so I'm going to live at Cosmo's house when shit hits the fan. Wait, yeah, is better than Pearson's? Cosmo Patrick. That whole state's going to drown. <laughs> no. That's I don't know. I, I think Cosmo and Patrick have to do a, uh, you know, who's his bigger comparison at some point, because oh Cosmo's sounded, well, actually, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't wow. take much to encourage you, does it, Patrick? At least Patrick, we're armed on Patrick, the West we Coast. All know it ain't you. We're in good shape. Oh. We all know it ain't you, Patrick, so sit down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You're called out. Oh. That's just wrong, Patrick. <laughs> the, fa the fact that, that it's the second time I've seen that in a week, in a week is too much for me. Too much information yeah. also. No, but people are starting to compare their, their gun collections by how much tax Biden is going to charge them if he gets into office. And, you know, some uh, people will say, uh, what gun? Know, mine is, mine is 20,000. Oh, well, mine's 40,000. No. What gun? Tax? Yeah. yeah he's charging, he wants to charge $200 for any semi-automatic weapon you have and $200 per any magazine over 10 rounds. Hey, you know. I don't know about Congress. You're just running a lower tax bracket. Boating accident. Gee, exactly. Mine, mine were in my boat, and they just happened to fall over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's and how is he going to know this? <laughs> yeah, right. Because he knows everything. Well, they're <laughs> registered, right? <laughs> except, except his name, what city he's in, who he's running against. <laughs> yeah, he knows everything else, though. Why do you think that? <laughs> yes, we're 18 on the Ask internet. The Republican. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> That's the, we call them low information voters. Mm. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Hey. Eric, coming in hot. <laughs> if you're going to make your own rules, Marcel, we're going to play. <laughs> I didn't make any rules. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, okay. That was last week. Oh, okay. Uh, so who's got scotch this week? What are you drinking? I'm Ooh. drinking Clonakilty. It's Irish. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm drinking Foo Foo beer, but I've decided to start putting it in a glass so Deerson can't bust my balls. Yeah, I, I, White Claw? Uh, mm -mm. I, I poured like a bottle of sake in my slow cooker today with the roast, so that should come out interesting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do we have any peeps in New Orleans or Biloxi or anywhere like that? 
right yeah, now. Yeah, they're about Ray to Ziegler. actually Chippa. Chippa's yeah. down there working on a project right now. Oh my well, God. Ziegler's, Ziegler's here. Him. He was here earlier. Ray? Yeah. He was? Yeah, Ray. Ray. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, here he is. Oh, I'd like a yeah, first hand yeah, account. Uh, it's getting really shitty, followed by really windy, followed by really wi uh, rainy. So that's that's it. That's a weather report. What is it? Followed is it, by uh, there's no work still, and you know you can't get any shows. And is it uh, like uh, Hurricane Zeta, or are we down yep. to Z's now in the Greek alphabet? That's uh, just in New Orleans. Yes, but Zeta is the sixth letter in the Greek alphabet. Oh, not the well, whatever. I mean, we're at, we're at 32 hurricanes this year. So. When you get down to Mu and Nu, then we're starting to get really, yeah. really deep into the Greek alphabet. Right. Uh, well, I remember there was one, one year. Oh, May, isn't it May the last letter? I thought it was a frat party rolling in. There was one year <laughs> where we had to go around twice. Well, like, as far I remember, as work goes, I, you know, is New Orleans just dead, or is there film? There's still film stuff going on down there, right? Yeah. Your mic's off, Ray. Well, somebody said today that like Nashville is wide open, bars are open, restaurants are open. It's just like happening. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going on, but the movies are really about it. And there's, I think, there was a first gig in the Superdome this week uh, that they've had since this all started. So it's it's really small stuff. Like, Do you have fans for football? On. They had three thousand fans in the okay. uh, in the dome. Yeah, we're actually filming a uh, TV or movie across the street from my apartment. Yeah, so. I mean New York's gotten kind of crazy with the move, the television and movies. They have, you know, I mean, everything I was doing resumed, and then everything, and then there's a bunch of new stuff coming in. So yeah, they're but they're doing it really smart. Uh, so I got called in for two days of work the next two days. Uh, I had a COVID test yesterday. They pay you for that. Uh, I came back negative today, and so I'm cleared to work starting Thursday, Friday. Good. So, on yeah. a film, on a film shoot. Yeah, on. Uh, I don't even know what it is. I'm just yeah, I'm programming a, a shoot at Silver. Great. Town. That's good. Yeah, well, but they're, if they're that busy that they're calling me, then. Yeah, that, that means all all their main guys are booked. Yeah. Or Eric. Out of Eric. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> or they're, or they're, you know, <laughs> unable. Eric, to... I'm ten minutes from Silver Cup. <laughs> Let's go. Well, you got local 52's phone number. You can become a permit. Yeah, yeah, you get on the 52 list, dude. What are you thinking? I don't know. Well, Eric, you and I will talk. I don't know how to make a phone call. I've been doing this it's <laughs> 12 years, and I'm still a permit. I so don't know uh, how to pick up the phone. I just don't know how to. Call. I don't know how to call. 52. The office, the 52 office. Say, I want to get on your overhire list. Local it's not, 11, it's I want not to that easy, over. but whatever. We'll talk. We'll talk. It's, it, yeah. it's a good place to start. Yeah. yeah. I just am fucking bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you could be here. Here. I've no, well, what I what I'm actually doing is there's a there's a unit, there's like a non-denominational church in Times Square and uh they're going foreseeable future online and they wanted a little like production design for a little set and some lights with these cheap Chinese LEDs. So I've been setting them up, but they have no money. They're a church, you know, that's in a tiny fucking room. So. Oh, it's not the mega church in Times Square. No, it's that journey, journey NYC or whatever it is. It's runway 69 church. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You don't want to announce the names of gigs on this call. You know that, right? Well, Wiseman's not here, so I think you're safe. Oh, I mean, what? <laughs> they don't have any money. Like, what's what? <laughs> oh. Doesn't matter. Wiseman will still go be a church. He's take him. Yeah. He'll take, the, he'll take the church just because it'll make him feel better about, you know, screwing somebody else that day or whatever. Oh, come on, man. He's not that bad. I say that with love. <laughs> No, he's you don't not know, bad at all. You don't he's, know him he's like amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing, but just don't blink. <laughs> so, so Hawaii is reopened. We, it we've, is. We've, yeah, we've got uh, people from the mainland are flying in. Next week, we actually get Japan coming in. Yeah, you I just have to provide the tests. You have to provide. You had a new lockdown. We did, and then they, um, you know. They let it go, and we got better, and there you go. As long as we keep the numbers under a certain point, they're going to keep moving. 
Any yep. quarantines for incoming? Uh, only if you if you take a <laughs> test within three days, you're good to go. Uh, if and you got to prove negative. If not, um, sorry, you're going to go to 14 day quarantine. Yeah, you got to prove negative is the big thing. So you got to provide a test. Speaking and of what's specific that tactics, Bob, what's that background you got going on? Who are we talking? Oh, uh, his squirrel. Your yeah. squirrel, Bob. Well, what's well, your yeah, squirrel? Well, does anybody know the story of the squirrel? That actually went viral oh. about five years ago. Oh. This is a squirrel that actually went through a, play, a house that uh, it was dressed up for Halloween, managed to put it on his head and run madly around the yard. And, That's fantastic. Uh, I know, gotta have one, it's Halloween. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, New York just added California back to the, the, the quarantine list. Yeah. That was yesterday, right? Yeah, but Chris, I don't think that they say like you don't have to quarantine if you test negative. I think if you come from places like Florida and whatever other states, you just quarantine 14 days period. They don't care about a test. Yes, right. that is right. true. The, the crazy the, the, thing is New Jersey and Connecticut right. are on the list now. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Maine. Maine. New Jersey, yeah, they're not. They're not actually on the list, Matt. They're. It's right. suggesting that you don't travel to Connecticut, New Jersey, yeah. Pennsylvania, or Massachusetts at this point. You can't, right. yeah, you just, they can't enforce it, but. Right, because well, there's too many people that live and work in different states back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, at one point they were telling, they were telling people from New Jersey where I live not to drive into New York and, you know, but that's not going to happen. And then you brought your broadsword and said, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like there's, there's I where they can close the bridges and tunnels. Give me a break. No, but I thought they were dealing with the tri-state area as just that, the tri-state area, given all the commuters and commuters. Well, yeah, that was, the, was going off on a tangent. Yeah. Well, the problem is they're saying that, like, the, the Pennsylvania bordering towns in New York, they're seeing an uptick because of people who live in Pennsylvania and are going into New York and work and vice versa. Yeah, I mean, people from Pennsylvania were, when, when the original shutdown happened, people from Pennsylvania were driving here to get liquor because their liquor stores were closed. Yeah. I hate to say it, but it seems like this is just going to bounce around from state to state until we have some kind of a mandate that is universal for the continental United States and Alaska and Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, you were serious. Sorry. You know, I don't, I don't know what else. We've been dicking around with this shit since exactly. April. When it's going to end. It's just going to keep going round and round. Well, so it seems to me that the only thing that we can do that we haven't yet done is create a national mandate of some semblance of unity so that we don't run into the issue of people who live in Pennsylvania and work in New York, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it, you know, we're just going to keep chasing our tails like a stupid dog until it falls down. Never going to happen with the current administration. Well, so you know, and again, we're probably going way off the beaten track. It's just that it seems to me that any person who continues to repeat the same activity and expect a different result is labeled uh, 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 crazy. Yes. And well, France, France just went back eight. into total lockdown today. Right, yeah. Yeah. Have, uh, and, and and in Germany. Germany as well, because they have the will, they have a, a, a the national willpower to, to go do it. And hopefully, well, it, right. Hopefully they also have 60, about 60 million people, not 300 million people. So it's a lot easier to control, and for one thing. Sure. Um, and the By other the thing way, is that the, they, on the on the opposing side of all of that, of course, um, there was an article today, and I can't remember if it was in Forbes or something, but there was an article about Australia and, you know, the real dark side of shutting down a country for, or, well, actually it was Melbourne, so a province, uh, Victoria province, for, I think it was 90 days, if I remember correctly, and just the mass devastation to life, to business, to the economy, to, well, you know. France was already closed down for, um, from mid-March to mid-May, completely. Um, mm -hmm. And then reopened, and then this is like, I guess, the second wave, and they've reclosed again. And we're waiting here to find out whether um, the same rules apply to uh, the islands or not. 
Well, so yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're a French. It boggles the mind that we keep repeating the same exercise and yeah. the same argument and discussion right. over and over and over again, right. like fucking right. hamsters in a wheel. And that is, to me, the most frustrating part of all of this. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not really prudent, but I think the quickest way to get rid of this is do a worldwide lockdown. Oh, God. And I know, <laughs> I know <laughs> it's not <laughs> prudent. It's how are you going to heal the whole world? Come on, Matt. Yeah. If there's nobody to infect, the virus will die. Hey, that's <laughs> actually not Does true. Anybody know what happened? Oh, well, it'll just this. be waiting for you to come back. Yeah, that's the smart the people problem. say that that's, that's not true. So that's the downside of all of this. So I'm not smart. Exactly. Right. exactly. No, no, no. I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm saying is, the smarter than us, the the scientists. The, yes. The no, but you're right, Marcel. So you're saying that that is correct, and and it just it just yeah, I mean, the, I think the most frustrating yeah, thing, and we're all do something we're all saying, that might we're all work. saying the same thing. The the frustrating thing is that it's like, okay, let's go look over here. Now let's do this. Now let's do this. Now let's try this, and nothing really is working because they're just making shit up as they go along. Because even the disease experts and the all of these virologists and all these people have never dealt with anything quite like this. So you got to try and figure out the answer, and hopefully we'll be smarter next time. But you know. I, well, I don't know that. So I think getting more is about learning. And yes, today they may say something different than they did four months ago, but it's based on new data and new findings. And that's the way science works. Sometimes you know today what you didn't know yesterday. The point is, as long as we, my point is, as long as we keep scattering in so many different directions, yeah. we've got no cohesiveness. So if everybody says do this, no, this is better, do that. If you have everybody moving at once, then you might be able to see what happens. But as long as you have everybody doing whatever they want willy nilly, you're never going to find out. Well, when they, when, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. He said no mask. Now he says mask. Now they don't know what he's talking about. And as long as the people at the top are, are repeating that kind of, you know, bad information. That's, that's actually not true. There's, Mark, there's a lot more nuance to what you just said. But. Yeah. I mean, again, the, th the thing is, I don't think anybody has, like, if, if somebody came in and said, this guy right here, 100% knows everything, and he's got the right answers, and we need to listen to him, I think we're all going to listen to him. Good. But uh, as, as where I sit January right 20th, now, you're going to have that. So good. Yeah. So who here is old enough to know about polio? Who here is old enough to have gone yeah, but through why, polio? Why? Why? I mean, all of so, the fucking questions so around polio, and one person, Jonas Salk, came up with a vaccine that pretty much squelched the disease. But I'm sure that the same kind of confusion running around the lack of knowledge of science was, a pre was present then, and that was in the 50s. Yeah, and I, same thing with the Spanish flu. Same thing with AIDS. I lived through it in oh, the yeah. fucking 80s. Yeah, there was that were carefully. killing people, and nobody knew the science of it, and nobody gave a fucking damn to find out what the science was. Right. We still don't the have a cure. For. Now right. it, we, still don't, we still don't have a cure for AIDS, but we know how to we prevent. We still don't have a cure. We still don't That's have a cure for cancer. It wasn't until street people <laughs> well, started guys. dying of it that there was even any effort made. When it was gays and when it was hookers, nobody gave a shit. All of a sudden, when it got into yeah, the street, I, 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 I think that that. I think that's I think that's a, a very biased and relatively. Marcel, maybe actually, that's before. very true, Marcel. Marcel, the point is, I lived it, and I'm living through COVID. We all did. We all did. Yeah, so I, I have friends too. Well, then that why, to be well, then the difference is now we are jumping through hoops because it's affecting everyone. It's affecting the entire population. If COVID only affected gay people, it would be just like AIDS revisited. Well, it's a it, it's a concern. Or any minority. Yeah, I mean, well, I agree with you, but AIDS was not that contagious. And in the beginning, even though it was gays and a lot of drug related people, it was pretty contained to certain places. It wasn't like every state in the country. Okay. No, but it no, was. Well, that's because of the gay caucus. But the point, right. I, right. the whole point I'm trying to make is that science is new and science right. is discovery. And we are dealing with something we know nothing about, and we are in the world of science and trying to discover. And as the knowledge is increased, sometimes the mandates or the rules or the what we do and how we deal with it best 
will increase. Right. So and let me ask you this, Marsha, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I'm, I'm a head of household, right? And so do I turn on Fox or CNN every night and wait for them to tell me what to do? Or do I, or do I read and learn and, and figure out things for yes, myself? Yes, Marcel, but you're smart. I, a lot of people are not smart enough to read and learn. Well, we're all smart. We're all smart. You do all of the above. You have the yeah. ability. I don't. I'm not. I'm not watching CNN or Fox to to learn about what I should do. No, that's. I'm that, just that's not gonna. Not what I said, Marcel. I said you do all of the above. You research on your own. You watch both CNN, Fox, ABC, CBS, and one other just for good measure, and you try to get with the general consensus. Oh, when yeah. I watch Fox, I get different news than when I watch CNN. And when I watch right. CNN, I get different news than when I watch my local coverage or my national networks. So I think you yeah. have to have a little bit of all. And I, what I, and I, I would my like is to move the friggin' places. hell on at this I point. Get, I, oh. I don't get my science from any of those places. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. That's what I'm trying to say is I don't either. But, but where do you get your news from? You research it. You can go on, on a medical journal and read. That's research. That's a combination. Yeah, that's, that's, of real, that's I, real research. I, is, is the, I just is, kind of feel like we're we're going way the hell off on a tangent here, and and you know, I don't know. For me, there's no value in this. I, I have a question. Right for anyone else. Does anybody does anybody know what's going on with the Red Rocks? Are they putting a whole new roof system in? Or actually, they... Nancy just popped in here. I just saw oh. her come on. Oh, she just. Let's... Cool. Oh, hey, I... you guys. Hey, hey Nancy. tell us about what's going on at your <laughs> venue. <laughs> Hi, well, Nancy, are you still furloughed? Uh, yeah, except that I'm going back to uh, do contact tracing next week, um, assuming oh, cool. I can get through the computer, my, my new computer work. Um, yeah, so we tore off the old roof, and uh, we're topless now. I'll send you guys a picture. And uh, <laughs> You're going to send us a topless picture? If anyone else wants to send topless pictures, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I just, Throw them in the I chat thought... room, and I promise That's I'll delete them after the call. <laughs> I thought, I thought I'd start a trend. Yes. Sure. Yeah, no, if, if I do it, everybody has to do it, right? Exactly. Mine's on the way. Yeah, yeah, we heard that about you, but we never believed it. Great, Jamie. Thank you. I'm I'm sorry, you guys. Anything for a laugh. So this is this is Red Rock's top list. I don't know if you can see oh on this. Gosh. Is, it, wow. It, oh it looks God. like it wow. did in the 80s when we used to start doing shows there before we put the yeah. scaffolding towers up. Yep. Yeah. Wow. I saw the video of them taking it down. It was pretty incredible. Oh, and you guys can go on our website, apparently. I just found this out last night from my boss, um, that you can go on our website and watch the um, time, or there we have a- uh, Can you put the uh, link in the chat, time lap. Nancy? Hey, pardon? Can you put the link in the chat? Sure, I will try. I'm like the Helen Keller of this stuff. You guys know that, right? So what's so, the new um, plan for the, your, your new roof when you get it? So the old one was built when I was the assistant manager there in 1980 something or other. Um, and it was designed to hold 40,000 pounds because the idea was that that yep. was the heaviest show at the time. <laughs> so uh, the new one's designed to hold 100,000 pounds plus sound wings. So um, it's going to look, it's not, it's going to look a little more cool than the old one, but it's pretty much the same kind of thing. I was hoping we'd get a grid that would lower to the ground like we used to have. Um, in the old days, Mark Fetto remembers that because we used to have an old, you know, six scaffolding towers with chain. I remember that too. Yep, but Bud, you would remember that. Of course yeah, you would. We was stood that, there many times knocking the rain off the roof. Was that a so, mountain grid? No, it was a, a guy named Rick Werpel, TTS here in Denver owned it. Oh, okay. And we'd go up and put ourselves a scar in from dropping a, dropping a piece of scaffolding on my leg from that thing, painting it every year. So, um, but I was gone for a long time too. Uh, so this new one's supposed to, it, it'll have a grid to walk on. It's to, it'll have a, a, like an elevator to bring gear up, um, to bring chain hoist motors so we don't have to pull them up. Um, it, it's high enough for the stagehands to walk under the grid. It's a little more hippie looking. It's got like a, um, well, kind of a flare thing over the top of it. And, um, but um, yeah, I'll see if I can send you guys the link to it. I don't know. And there's also, I have a picture someplace of what it's supposed to look like. I'll try to send you that too, or hold that up because I'm so happy. Roughly the same size or bigger? About the same size. I'm oh. still not sure, but my boss, my boss asked for uh, input on it. He did one meeting for input and then never heard back from him on anything else. So there's things like it still doesn't have a downstage 
truss yeah. or anything to hang anything of downstage, but that That's was part of That's what I was wondering the, if you guys were going to do an overhang. You know, wouldn't that have been smart of us? But no, we're not. <laughs> try as I may. Try as I told them many times that we needed it. And everybody was going to ask for it. Everybody's going to wonder why we didn't do it. But um, can be as remote as you want. Like a so part of it was that um, we didn't, the, the historical society won't let us do certain things. So that was part of the reason they, um, they wouldn't let us go any further out, apparently. Um, I'm still not sure what we're doing about the wings, which were covered with tarps before. And he made us keep the tarps in case we need them again, which I'm really hoping he's got a better plan than using the tarps over the sides, as you guys know who've been there, that mm -hmm, the rain just pours yeah. in around the tarps. Hang on. So, um, come on. Anyway, let me see if I can dig up the picture while we're talking and show it to you. But it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be done by April 2nd of this coming year. And we have Easter sunrise yeah, service um, April 4th. Oh, the and then um, we also have concerts <coughs> starting like April 18th, Ganja White Nights for three, uh, Ganja White Night for three days, plus hold starting almost immediately. So but we just got moved back up what to- What capacity? Uh, 100,000 pounds on the new one. No, is no, this, people. Oh, uh, Red Rocks is about 9,000. It's not changing the capacity at all. It's just going, it's just a new roof for no, the state. No, but you're going to go to full capacity on these shows that are coming up well, that you're talking about? Probably not. Um, it depends on what they let us do. Um, they, they're not really telling us yet. So we just went back. We just went down from 175 people to 75 people yesterday oh, wow. by, the, by the governor. And we're having an outbreak, so we have like eight. In fact, I'm waiting on a call to go do a COVID test right now. Um, by the way, Marcel, that you know that that background is just not fair. It was seven degrees here yesterday, and I was uh, just, no. it's not a background. It's right outside my patio here. So <laughs> okay, I really hate your guts right now. Sorry, I really I'm hate sorry. your guts. Okay, sorry. sorry. Show off. They, Showing they, off. They, Ghetto they, doesn't they, look like he's freezing either, though. Yeah, Should well. I go, I go sit by the pool? <laughs> there you go. They, they're putting yeah, we're roof. all coming to your house. Damn, where are, you're not in Canada. Where are you? That's been a lie this whole time. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. Can you tell I'm a little lonely at home, apparently? Uh, yeah. Nancy, are they putting a roof over the audience also? No, Is it no, not at all. Just right, we're still, we'll still make them suffer. I heard a I heard a rumor that that like they were extending the roof over and I didn't know if that was true. Or no, not. I tried to get them extend for a downstage, but they wouldn't do it. So, yeah. Are you guys doing anything for the backstage areas and or like any of the dressing rooms or or is that all staying the same in the tunnels and all that? Well, I don't know if you guys have been there lately. We've really upgraded them. They're they're much nicer in the old days. When I started there, we didn't actually have a shower. And my old boyfriend, David Russell, you guys might know, convinced us to put in a shower when I was the assistant manager there. So um, we do really have nice back, nice uh, bet, blah, blah, the dressing rooms now. Um, we're actually gonna take out some of the pillars that were put in to support the old roof and the original pillars. Some of the pillars that were in the dressing rooms and the catering room there are coming out because the new roof apparently is structurally so much better that it doesn't need those pillars. But the, back, the downstage, the backstage should be much better. About the same, actually. Excuse me. Can you tell who hasn't had coffee lately? <laughs> My anyway. buddy, if you guys know Tiberius Redbeard, he posted yeah. a he posted a video of the roof coming off. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm I don't know to, him, but I love his name. I'm trying to find um, the video, and I'll share. On Ray's Facebook, that's where I saw it, the the uh, the video, and that's why I knew they they were taking the roof off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we haven't exactly made a big deal of it, but hopefully it'll be done by April 2nd. They're, they're telling us now we have, I guess our plan B is that we would go to smaller audiences. Um, and we're, they let the Broncos go to like 5,200 people, I think. So if we could get small, if we get smaller audiences and we're stuck with that, we still know like local bands and smaller bands and some big bands will still want to come play. Obviously, it's just not financially viable, but we find that a lot of bands play there just because they want to, not because they're going to make money. You know, compared to Fiddler Screen or, or uh, Pepsi Center, they're not going to make as much money. So, or they're not going to make any money compared to some of those places. So, some of them will just keep coming back. Like we had, you know, um, Nathaniel Rateliff do kind of a residency of five nights um, uh, beginning of October this year before we closed it down altogether to change out the roof. So how much more capacity are you gaining with the new roof? 
Um, it was 40,000, it'll be 100,000 now, plus, uh, I think probably plus sound wings, yeah. Nice. So, 60,000 pounds, Matt. Rare! Rare! Math is very good. Damn. <laughs> Just trying to help. I'm trying to be helpful. You guys have been out of work too long. Getting yeah, really, trumpies. you're doing math. I mean, you say I'm the shit stirrer of the two of us. Come on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big old pot. Stirred up. Were you guys uh, fixing front of house at all, Nancy? Um, we put a new tarp on it, um, but it's still going to be the little roller that goes over the. It's still the roller with a tarp over it that goes down front of house. There's not a lot of room there. I mean, we. I don't know what the last time you were there. We have dug out. We put a video studio under there. Um, oh, basically, from the, room for from the tunnel from that tunnel. Yeah, from the tunnel. Yeah, the tunnel hasn't changed. Your names are all still there wherever you wrote them. <laughs> it was you, Matt, right? Oh, sorry. Um, anyway, so yeah, the tunnel's still there, and uh, front of house really hasn't changed at all from the last couple of years, anyway. So Other small. Than we, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, small, small and uncomfortable and wet. Yeah, pretty much. We've got your DB meter for the audio guys right in front of, front of them now, so they can't say they didn't see it. Nice. Well, that sounds exciting. Did I hear something? Did I? I think somebody shared. A, a post or something about some theaters opening? Are there theaters opening in New York? No, they're suing Cuomo to open. Oh, that's what it was, right, but yeah. The problem is these theaters are not very uh, very good at following compliance even when there isn't COVID, so. Right, right. so they're, they're probably going nowhere. Theaters, they're rental houses, they're just empty buildings that want you to bring oh. in shows. Right. right. So that ain't going anywhere. Some no. some are shooting. They're like uh, at the at some of the theaters in the city. They're they're shooting movies now too. So cool. Yeah, cool. in London they're doing that too. Some like one of the national theaters are shooting a version of Romeo and Juliet. And yeah, seems to be a good way to put them to work. Right. You're putting plants in the audience. Well, they can what? always virtually put people in there later, you know. For the cutouts. Yeah. Well, I guess the Broncos the did cutouts at the South Park. Like it doesn't really matter, I guess. Well, wasn't a theater in the West End or a theater in the West End tried putting plants in the audience or some ridiculous thing like that? <laughs> no, I don't know. I remember that. There are some theaters in England that are functioning with reduced um, capacity. Um, yeah, they did the sleepless. Uh, they did the sleepless in Seattle show right. that was already in progress beforehand in an outdoor theater there, mm -hmm. and that proceeded with like a thirty-five percent capacity. Also, I don't know if anybody noticed, but the San Diego Opera is doing an outdoor driving version of La Boheme this week, um, oh, and I it's like three hundred dollars. $300 a car for VIP parking, $200 a car for regular parking. And you can, it's funny, you can have as many people in your car as there are seat belts. <laughs> so it's like you have five seat belts, you can have five. So people. that's like 12? Um, and well, it depends on what you're driving. Yeah. But the opening night was so loud, and um, they're really very pleased with it. Um, they're going to do their second show that way too. It's in an arena parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's another I'm, opera. I'm always surprised they're not doing more of those, like, you know, opera or, uh, you know, like things that were already large format performances. What about those hotel concerts? I saw a couple months back somebody decided that, you know, four yeah. people per room and you just, we're on the balcony and there was a concert in the parking lot and just layers of people. And no, that was the Hyatt House in the 80s. That was the Riot House in the 80s. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's I know I've, that's I've got friends in, uh, in I've got friends in Calgary, home. Canada. I've got friends in Calgary, Canada, Canada that are doing that. It sounds like the kind of concert I'd like to attend, to be honest. I mean, you have your own hotel room, and BYOB, right? <laughs> well, and uh, an EDM guy, who was it? I forget who did it in Miami in the very beginning of this thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I uh, yeah. I remember that. Uh, you know, that was funny. the fundraiser. Oh, was it? You uh, know, it's funny because in the old days at the Hard Rock, 
uh, every room had those, like, if you're on the pool side, they, they, every room had double doors that opened. And one night we were there and there was some reggae band outside and it was so loud, you had to open your doors and listen to it. That would have been a perfect venue for that kind of concert. Speaking yeah, of Miami, I, mean, I saw that Eleven's opening again and talk about a place that <laughs> doesn't appreciate capacity rules pre-COVID. There you go, Ellen, it's behind me. There you go. There you go. Yep. All right. Yep. All those rooms had double doors and it was a great way to watch what was going out at the pool. Yeah. So the MGM is bringing back, I think six shows in its different theaters in Vegas small like carrot top and some smaller shows. yeah i saw that but too yeah work, you know because they're waiting for their court date i think but uh, uh they're trying to do some smaller stuff i heard that uh the cosmo now is closed monday through thursday or something right i don't know about the cosmo i know encore is is only yeah. open the new encore was the restaurants oh it's not the hotel though no 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 Oh, got it. No, they're happy to take your money. They're just not going to keep restaurants open, pulling down a lot of that stuff. Well, are they still having problems with people like riding scooters in the elevators in the hallways and the shootings and stuff at the Cosmo? Or is the that shootings are a real fucking problem right now on the Strip overall. Um, just about every night, there's there's a significant amount of gang violence still. Shit. And it's all all. So are you carrying gang. your guns when you go to the store? What's that? I blame Are you it carrying all. Carrying guns when you go to the store, you're blazing on the way to the store. There, I carry a gun when I walk my dog. Yeah, uh, properly. <laughs> Sounds I mean, like you got it. Seriously, I mean, it's 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 not cool. It's cheap rooms have brought in the wrong crowd. Yep, that's what I heard. Oh, so, oh yeah. So what's what's happened <laughs> from what we've heard that. is that um, the the. But most of the casinos, so like even MGM, I think, was giving away rooms for like forty dollars to eighty dollars a night uh, in in Nevada. And I'll, I'm, I know I'm going to screw up the the specifics of this thing, but the the general gist of it is that if, in California, if you have an EBT card, you have a limit as to how much you can take out on it each day. In Nevada, you don't have a limit. So people are coming from California with EBT cards, going to supermarkets, cashing them in for the full Monty for the month, and then going hog wild on the strip. Um, I hate to sound ignorant, but what's an EBT card? It's like food stamps. Okay. These days it's, it's called an EBT card. And there's like an ATM in supermarkets where you can get, pull cash out to pay for things. And so okay. a, a, about three or four weeks ago, D had gone to, uh, to the supermarket on a, a Friday afternoon and she, she texted me from it. She goes, you're not going to believe this. There's like about a hundred people online for the EBT machine and there's not a single Nevada plate in the parking lot. All the cars are from California. I don't really know what's going on. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. This is not going to be cool. And sure enough, that weekend was, that was the weekend with all of the big fights and encore and the riot that happened. And then, you know, there was a, I think there was only one shooting that weekend. But I saw some YouTube that videos bad. that, like, I mean, when you see the people who are involved and some of the things that are going on, it's like, wow, where is this? This is at the Cosmo, <laughs> you know, like it's 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 absolutely East LA gangbangers. It's, it's shocking, ridiculous. and yeah, the and shocking. the Metro Police have gone to all the casinos and flat out said, "You guys need to raise the rates because that's what's driving the element in." And, and we we're we're understaffed as it is, and you've got people on the streets screaming to defund us. We can't help you at this point. We, we don't have enough staff to pull this off, and you guys yeah. got to start helping yourselves. So well, and when you add in the problems and the costs involved and everything, I can't imagine that that makes any sense to rent these people rooms for 50 bucks. You know, you're better off leaving the room empty and not destroying your property, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't well, get it. That's, not, that's not, not how thrashing businesses work, Marcel. <laughs> how what businesses work? Thrashing businesses who are desperate yeah. for cash flow. You know, they're like, what? Oh, $2? We'll take it. Yeah, short-sighted. 
Yeah. Well, it's the lost leader too. Just get the, the gambling revenues. Somebody's trying to talk and it ain't working. Ellen. <laughs> oh. She's on an island and that's what happens, I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah, Ellen, you may need to kill your video. Jason, you were trying to say something. Got to unmute. Yeah, we're not hearing you, Jason. Okay. Your lips are moving, but I ain't hearing nothing. No. Nope. Maybe he's pranking us. Patrick Pearson, any word on the palms? Is it still dark? There, the the word on the palms is that they will not be coming back. Wow, that's a shame. Ah, oh, shame. Oof. I just uh, posted a photo. My friend was the scenic designer at the Atlanta Opera, and uh, this is what they decided to do. So I sent What's with the them. new uh, um, facility there in Vegas? The the guys who opened the D, the um, Cirque, and and that new new it's the new hotel that has first time in ten years a new hotel is open. Yeah, Circa is opening up. I think they open up at uh, midnight tonight. It was last night. What was it last it was night? Last night, and that's the first ground up hotel built in downtown in forty years. Wow! Wow! And it. <laughs> From what I've seen, I haven't been there, but from what I've seen, I'm, you know, they were doing all the TV yeah, I saw that stuff. remote from there. It looks pretty cool. Looks yeah, like a neat it's really beautiful. And they're not the only one. Resort World is about to open, too. They're, they're getting very close. Yeah. They're directly across from, uh, or just down the road from the wind. And... Mm. Hear me now. Yeah, it's going to be There's really that. interesting to see how they all handle it. So I oh, have a and... question. I have a question that I need to ask before I forget and, and we say goodbye and then I go, damn it. So I am assuming that I should cancel next week, right? <laughs> because it's Wednesday, <clears throat> the day after the election. And I think, yes. I think it could make for a very, uh, I don't know. Contention? I don't think it even Contention. matters who wins or loses. What are you, are you afraid you of? I'm not wimping out, but I, I don't, I don't want to, there may not be any results by Wednesday. There should, there will be. That's There's true. no results Friday. by Wednesday. And whatever result, you're going to see results. They're just not going to be final results. And just realize that 22 yeah. states will continue, at the very least, 22 states will continue counting till like Friday. Oh, so, cool. we need this, you guys. We need this. We need this. What are I we just don't do understand now? why. To to? Oh, sorry. I don't yeah, understand. Need, why. Nancy. Go on, Matt. I just don't understand why, like, if states have mail-in ballots at this point, like, why they can't count them until day of. Like, that's back, get back to the point. Do we want to talk next week or not? I say <laughs> if we can have fun without bringing up politics or disease. How are you going to do that? <laughs> or any of that stuff. Okay. I'll tell you about my lizard. Marsh, you couldn't get through today without doing that. You I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll bring up the topic, Patrick. Marcel, here's the deal. Two weeks. I think we've made two weeks out of thirty where we've managed to not say a word about politics. I'd say next week is is going to be a hard one. Everybody has a Vimo account next week, and if they talk or bring up politics, it's ten. Oh, that's a good idea. Like a swear jar. Yes, swear jar. That's a friggin' great idea. Is that like friends for cursing? You better bring a thousand dollars in ten. Eric's gonna preload his account. In order, in order to really, get on the really call, you have idea. to. In order to get on the call, you have to open up your PayPal account. Oh my God! I'm just, yes. take, I'm just gonna take footage out. of my pig for the entire day for that entire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to prepay uh, two hundred dollars, please. <laughs> yeah. That's a really yeah. good idea. I think well, that's a just freaking have a good idea. Charity. What? Yeah, no, absolutely. We'll decide who to give it to. And uh, anybody who brings up either the T word or the B word or any kind of politics or whatsoever. We could sell like well, a C word's word. okay. C word's good. <laughs> okay. C word's fine. Hey, about, I have a friend who finds me a dollar for every curse word I say when I'm in her office, so that'd work. Yeah. Uh, Ten bucks. What I have to do around my daughter. <laughs> God, this is amazing. I, I think that's it. You, you, we do. We're open for business next next Wednesday, but it's a Venmo goes somewhere. It's, it's a the, fine day. But like Eric, if, if we should, I'll tell you what. We'll give you twenty bucks we'll, to start. 
Just put in. We'll give you 30 seconds. We'll there. give you 30 seconds on a soapbox for a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, got I, got Terry, I got Terry Jackson's money. Right? Right. In tears. So where do we right. send the hundred bucks? Where, 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 what's the <laughs> final outcome of, of where? Well, we'll, it we'll, goes, you'll it send goes it. to Planned Parenthood. Don't you'll worry about it. Give it all, <laughs> you'll give it all to me. You'll send it all to like me. That. I'll give you a, you can either do Cash App or Venmo or whatever, and then whatever it, no, no, whatever no. it ends up being, I'll give it to whoever you tell me to give it to. Yeah, so whether yeah. No, it's bullshit. a charity I'll do, I'll or a do, broke person I'll a, or... I'll do a public donation that everybody can see. Oh, be, oh my God. Very, Are you serious, well, Eric? You yeah. think I'm going to steal people's 10 bucks? Come on. Man. No, I'd rather do the donation. I don't think Marcel... Have you seen Marcel's house? <laughs> I don't know. He he books for So... <laughs> I'm worried about that. Yeah. Right. All right. I still want to know why you're looking for car insurance, for driving insurance for your son who drives race cars. Because he just got his freaking license. So, so get racing. this. So that there's, there's a couple of funny things here. He's driven a race car. He's 16. He's driven a race car since he was six, right? And so, Wonder they the, so the thing is, he failed his first driving test. Uh, about a month ago, right? About a month ago. No, but here's why he failed. So the woman was in a different car and talking to him on Bluetooth through his phone, right? And saying, turn left here, turn right here. So then she said, I want you to speed up to 25 miles per hour and then brake aggressively. Oh, geez. And so he did. He did. And, and she gets him out of the car after that. And she goes, I have to fail you for when I told you to brake aggressively. And he said, why? And she said, well, I've been doing this a long time and you didn't break aggressively. And he said, but I did. And she said, no, when you break aggressively, your body flies forward like this out of control. And he goes, lady, I'm a friggin' race car driver. My body is always in control. All right. <laughs> you know, and she's like, I don't care. I have to fail you for that. Oh so, I've never then, had a driver be oh like aggressively. So the, other, so the other thing is, so while he's on his permit, his mother sends him to Dunkin' Donuts to the drive through or whatever, which is two blocks from his house, right? And so he's driving her, he's driving her Audi. And in the line in the drive through the lady in front of him went and then stopped. And so he banged into the back of her. Oh, no. So, so he's like, oh, shit, my driving test is in like a week, the one that he failed. And, I, you know, I'm in trouble. I don't want to get caught. So he decides to pull out of the line and leave. And oh, he no. goes home to he goes to get his mom and to bring her back so that he can deal with this situation, right? So on the way back, he gets pulled over by the police who were there talking to the lady, and he gets a ticket for leaving the scene of an accident. Right. Oh, really oh. So so this and the accident itself, because she reports it to the insurance, even though there's not like he probably hit her at three miles an hour, right? But um, no so this a nice bicycle and so uh, this sh this shows here. up on his driving license. So yeah, today I called to get a quote, and it's seventy six hundred dollars to add oh, him to my oh insurance. My <laughs> so a yeah, no, no seventy six hundred dollars a year. That's it doesn't really matter. matter. We just slashed that bitch's tires to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. No. Yeah, so, they, so is it because of COVID that the driving instructor was giving him a test from another car? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, that's, that's exactly why. And so, so somebody just know? somebody just told me what you do is you basically buy a burner car, <laughs> you know, like a, a six thousand dollar Honda or something, yeah. and yeah. you just get like uh, public liability insurance on it or whatever, and it's yeah. it's that's inexpensive great. and. If he hits someone and totals the car or wrecks the car or whatever, then, you know, he There's doesn't no have a car, car anymore. Yeah. But he won't be driving an Audi. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Don't do that. Doors, Marcel. Nobody should start mm. driving an Audi. Everybody should start a little bit lower. So why did mm. so Marcel, he left because nobody was in the car with him and having yeah. him. So he panicked. He didn't know what to do. So he was like, I gotta get my mom because she's not here, right? And he thought he was going to get in real serious trouble because he was driving without a license. And uh, but the bigger problem from driving without a license was leaving the scene of an accident. But he didn't know that, you know, he's a knucklehead.
Marcel, so, you'll have enough money next Tuesday or, after, or next Wednesday with the political talk to pay for that insurance. No I'm, problem. I'm, I'm hey, pretty sure why, that no one is going to accept money. my son as charity. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that that's not going to be a, a charitable uh, well, I don't donation. Know. No. Donating, no, I feel bad for him, donating your son might be the, never mind. Uh, funny. <laughs> I don't think that's how you want to donate. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's cheaper for him to drive his race car, you know, to the movies than it is to drive my car, I guess. Oh, my God. I don't know. Does he not need a license to drive a race car? How does that work? Um, well, he's got a racing license. He's always had, he had an international racing license at like nine oh. or ten years old, I think. Um, and he's got a, he's got a uh, IMSA and a SCCA racing license now. So, cool. Yeah, but doesn't matter, you know. And the other thing is, I mean, the crazy thing when you have a racing driver who's learning to drive on the roads and going to get a driving license, you know, he's on the person's bumper in front of him all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, dude, you can't bump draft in regular cars. It just doesn't work like that. Like, you know, they break at weird times, and he's like, I got this. I'm good. I'm good. So yeah. Anyways, so I'm hoping someone has an insurance company as a side hustle did you race cars or, or do you still or well how it started was i was buying sports cars mm -hmm. and um i didn't want to drive fast on the street and so uh you know i started just going to track events because there's all over the country there's track events where for two or three hundred bucks you can take your car whatever it is you could take like your your Honda or your Audi or whatever to the track mm -hmm. and just drive it fast around a racetrack. They'll put an instructor in there with you if you want an instructor. And uh, so I used to do a whole bunch of those with my cars and I got pretty serious about it and I got a racing license and everything else. And he started coming with me and we were at a track in Palm Beach where there happened to be a go-kart track next to it. And he was like, dad, 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 I want to try that. I want to try that. Yeah. And so they wouldn't let him go on the slow rental carts, but they would put him in a racing cart as long as you hired a coach to go and do like a lead follow thing with him. So he did that a couple of times and just said, dad, this is all I ever want to do with my life. And I said, okay, so we oh, bought him nice. a go-kart and then, uh, you know, it just took off from there. So it's been a lot of fun. Actually, we would have been racing in Las Vegas this weekend under normal conditions at a race called the Super Nats. Or last weekend. It's the same weekend as LDI every year. Oh, that's convenient. Where, where, where did we have raced? Uh, well, we always raced at the Rio in the parking lot. So they built a temporary track for two weeks in the parking lot behind the Rio. And one year they built it right across the street from the convention center um in that big empty lot that was across the street from the convention center like probably two or three years ago yeah but uh um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah that race was of course canceled yeah that's kind of yeah. cool that's cool racing's yeah. fun i've done some uh some real go-karts and also some k1 but it's better oh, to really? go get those real ones you know it's yeah i want to get back into well, that really the guy the guy who got me into it was a guy named gary peterson out in california who owns a company called encore cases Mm -hmm. And he was a big racing guy and a go-kart guy too. And he took me out on carts first and I loved it at uh, Willow Springs in California. And then he had a Ford GT and he took me out and let me drive that around the track a bunch of times. And that was it. I was hooked. I was oh, like, yeah. okay, forget it. I'm doing this. And so I did it for a while until my son got into it. And then it was just like, forget it. It's, it's more fun to me. watch him probably. Too expensive. Well, to yeah, it's, it's too expensive to just, to do it yourself plus him you know unless yeah. you know you got way more money than me yeah i remember i was driving two hours each way to go to the homestead track and just go go-karting and spend like 250 mm. but you know you got to do something there's yeah, a racetrack there's a racetrack out on long island i remember being uh you know yep. friend of my house where southampton kind of meets amagansett and yeah. all the people who have their sports cars just line up to just yeah. run around the track. Um, you yeah, know, I've like, been to that track. I think it's called like NCMP or something. Yeah, something River, like that. And, and, I mean, you don't What's need it called? any. It's Riverhead, Riverhead Raceway. They do. Uh, oh, they that's do not the one I've been there. to. They do figure eights. Um, they oh. do figure eights with school buses, which is insane to watch. 
Oh There's a really nice one in Jersey. New Jersey too, New Jersey Motorsports Park. See you, yeah, I know New Jersey Motorsport Park too. The one in uh, the Hamptons, I think all you needed was to have a fancy sports car. Yeah. That's funny. We start talking about racing and we lost our audience. Well, <laughs> it is we're not talking about politics, so pick your point. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, really. At least we're not talking about <laughs> yeah. I'm well. How are you? Uh oh. We need to mute Ellen. You already did. Um, did. Did NASCAR finally get to run the Texas race? It's it's running, running right now. Running right now. And they're working. What is that? Saturday, right? Sunday. They are on Sunday this week. Okay. The NASCAR. So we race. decided we are doing it next week. We are doing this call next week. Yes. Okay. I'm up for it. Ten dollar, ten dollar square jar. <laughs> Hold on one second. That was an aggressive response. What was? <laughs> <laughs> I think we are going to do the call. Are we you agreed to organize a call for next week? Someone's, someone's dog just went ballistic. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't think it was a dog. I think there was somebody's opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the Stevens. He <laughs> started barking and stormed off and off. Before you guys sign off, I, you got to look at this. This is actually a dog Halloween costume. That's one dog with the marshal over, you know, the, the second Oh boy. my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor dog. It's hysterical. That's so cute. Yeah, that I'm is hysterical, man. In the, uh, in the passes. It's just, I need to get it out reduced, like that so it like I'm actually loading dog in. Halloween costumes. <laughs> I saw one yesterday that was like a, a a guy squashed on the front of a like pickup truck and on the back of his shirt it said Antifa. Oh boy. That one was kind of humorous. That's a hundred bucks there, Marcel. <laughs> no, next week. Next week. <laughs> oh God, That's Steve Warren's week. coming. How do we how do we how do we trick Steve Warren somehow? We can we all leave again. Backwards. We all leave. Everybody can leave. Yeah, we could we okay, could do okay. that. Oh, what if we all do the, the, the evil turn? Why don't we all just talk at once about different things? <laughs> okay, I can get my dog to bark at you. And everybody can say whatever they need to say. Yeah, how about everybody just starts talking? Okay, here we go. Everybody has to unmute. So anyway, the then the guy was uh, playing guitar and so, he did I don't know. And, I mean, and, and the guy was like really stupid. And one time he was <laughs> with an airplane around, 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 and then he died. And there was a swimming pool at the bottom in a lake. I'm not sure what it was actually. But he died again. And there was this guy named Steve, and he was a bit of an asshole. And, you know, it just happened. I think the guy's that's come in. Just a <laughs> Steve, your mic is muted. Got you again, Steve. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> hey, Steve. How you doing? Steve. Hey, Mike. Okay. Hey, Steve. Oh. Marcel, Did you understand you like all of that? Too much fun. I want to. I want to be with you. Did you understand all of that? <laughs> It was like I'd come into some dystopian nightmare. <laughs> How is everybody? Welcome. Doing great. How's it going? Hi, Steve. Good. Our hangover. Getting Steve. lubricated. Good to see you upright, Steve. Hmm? Uh, we, we had a we had a good laugh about you earlier, Steve. Oh no, man! I missed all the good stuff. My partner suddenly called me and asked me to pick up from yoga. You're like, what? I mean, it's like Wednesday night, you know? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday night is sacred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know. I did have quite a lot to drink last Friday. Wow. So, Steve, we've much. decided. So, we, we had a conversation. See you, Fetto. See you later. See you next week. It's going to be an interesting one. What? Bye, bring, Mark. Bring $10 denominations. Bye. And, see uh, ya. <laughs> like when you go to a strip club, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember when it used to be singles. Jesus. What happened? Yeah, right? Um, what? So, Steve, I, I was asking everyone, I guess we should cancel the call for next week because the election is on Tuesday, right? Wednesday, you know, both sides are probably going to be a little steamy. So everyone said, no, no, let's go ahead and do it. But anytime someone mentions anything political, you have to pay $10 into the swear jar. 
Yeah, I'd support that. I was a little bit scared, I, even coming in tonight. I thought, my God, we're getting loads of it over here. No, nah, we've behaved. It's Are cheaper you? if you prepay, though. It's early. Who <laughs> <laughs> is this, the fire festival? You just prepay? <laughs> Set up an account. <laughs> you get a discount? <laughs> a bulk discount? Yeah, like pay, pay for 10, 10 infractions and get 12 or something. Exactly. It's only possible we're listening. We're having the same conversation until November 28th. Just so you know. It could then be I guess further. the lines will stay in effect. Somebody's got. I have a. Th I have a feeling by Wednesday we're gonna. I, I have a feeling by Wednesday we're gonna have a pretty good idea. Oh, that's a good screen that you got there, Eric. Good yeah. lord. <laughs> what do you have? Uh, <laughs> yeah. with you. It's all good until there's two goats fucking, you know, and then God. then we've gone to hell at that point. And then it's time to go home. Those are the clean mm. ones. I've been I've been very uh, very behaved with my virtual backgrounds. Marcel, what about what? Gordon last week? What group do you that virtual background <laughs> like for? Paul, like, oh, Whoa. dude, have you yeah. played D and D with me? <laughs> no, I apparently I've been missing out. <laughs> Yeah, well, here, here's a, here's a, here. Are you the DM or, or are you just a player? That's, that's Chippa for all of you. I like that. Uh, <laughs> nice. How come Chippa hasn't yeah. joined any of us and we didn't see him on LDI a happy he's hour? Work, he's, he's working. Let's he's try to work about him. Mm. He's in the middle of a hurricane right now, setting up bridge lights. That's this way. That's a horrible idea. See ya, Bob. Aloha, buddy. Aloha. Happy Aloha. Aloha. See you next week. Wait, you know what? I got, there's one last thing I got to say. Of all weird things in Halloween, the reason I celebrate is the birth of my grandson. He's turning 13 this year. Oh, great. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. All right. Happy good birthday. One. Is that a cool birthday or what? That is a I'm very cool birthday. Okay. On that note, love y'all. Good to see you. Love you, brother. Mm. Later, see you Bob. next week. Aloha, Bob. Well, that yeah. kid figured out how to get presents on Halloween. That's pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marcel, have you just been hiding that background from us? Is that actually where you live? Yeah, that's, that's where I live. That's the backyard. I'm, so I'm totally jealous, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. Why am I not there now? Hey. What are you celebrating? What's happening with the cigar, the wine? I'm just, I just want your life at this moment. Why? I don't know. You just have, don't I know. have cigar and a going on in your house <laughs> and a shitty beer. <laughs> the Corona. It is a shitty beer. It is it's Corona. A pro, a pro. Wait, wait, is it Corona or is it Corona Light? No, it's worse. It's Corona Premier. Go ahead, laugh, Pearson. Go oh, ahead. God. Go ahead, Pearson. Bust my balls. It's all right. Oh God. I guess it's better do than that. Do they sell that beer at Sephora? <laughs> wow. That's a good they one. give it to you when I you like walk that. in as a sample. <laughs> in the perfume Don't. section. Is that all you guys got? Is that all you got? Not in the men's section. <laughs> uh, Our heat index was 97 today in Orlando. Jesus. That's not good either. Oh, wow. No. Yeah. It's actually kind of cold for Tucson right now. We went up yeah. to Flagstaff yesterday and it, it had snowed the night before. Kind of uh, a, another swing in the other direction that's also scary. Weird. I think I saw on the news yesterday or the day before there was a 99 degree difference between somewhere in Colorado and South Florida, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, it was That's one enough. degrees here a couple days ago, a couple yeah, nights ago. One. Yo, they said we might get snow here this weekend from the storm in Jersey, which is crazy. And it's 57 here right now, so I wouldn't. Not it wouldn't bad. Be I have snow forecast at my house in the Catskills for Friday with a low of 17. And another low of 15 on Monday. So winters are. Yeah, that's about the same weather here. Same weather here, Marsha. Looks like we're yeah. having a. You're in Long Valley, did you say, Chris? 
Yeah, Long Valley, New Jersey. I know Long Valley. Yeah, you're right. Madison. Got some nice hills up there. It's some nice country up there. Marsha, do you have somebody that, that looks at the house to make sure your pipes don't freeze and shit like that? I drain the house, and I did so when I left in November, but I do have a handyman who's kept an eye out, and uh, my guy who does my lawn reported that he just did the final mulch mowing of the season. And all the leaves are down. All right. I'm out, guys. Thanks, Marcel. Eric, for later, Eric. Later. Actually, I'm going to jump to you. I gotta, Bye. I gotta hey, pull Eric. Hey, hey, Eric. Eric, should we go on a Zoom call on election night? <laughs> yeah, 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 Marcel, because on, uh, that whole text chain. <laughs> Red Rock, Red Rocks. No, no. Uh, no, I mean, the thing is, the thing is, I go in and I'm calling everybody snowflakes and stuff, and Herrick freaking bitch slapped me to the dirt so quickly. I was like ready to cry. I was done. It's just all I, was I like, have. I'm out. Facts. Sorry. I'm out. I'm out. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Take it easy, guys. Later, man. Be well, everybody. Right. Cheers, Chris. No matter who you're Cheers. voting for, we love you. <laughs>